Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the eighth meeting in 2016 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. I remind everyone to switch mobile phones and other devices to silent as they may interfere with the broadcasting. First item on today's agenda is cross-party groups. And uh, I would like to welcome uh, Ross Greer, MSP, um, who is here on the proposed cross-party book on group on Kurdistan. Uh, so a very warm welcome, Mr Greer, and if you would like to make an opening statement about the group. Thanks very much, Convener. It's nice to see the view from this end of the table. Um, I'll be exceptionally brief. The cross-party group on Kurdistan has been set up because uh, this is a, an area of interest that wasn't previously fulfilled by a cross-party group. Uh, we have a Kurdish community in Scotland who are very active, uh, both politically and culturally. This gives them uh, a route to engage with Parliament and with MSPs. It also gives us an opportunity to reflect on both the history of the region that is Kurdistan and on the rapidly uh, developing situation there at the moment. Kurdistan split between the current borders of Turkey, Syria, Iraq and Iran. So the Kurdish population there have been affected significantly by the Arab Spring, the conflict against Daesh, uh, changing political situation in Turkey, etc. So this cross-party group would give us an opportunity to reflect on those developments and on Scotland's relationship with our own Kurdish community. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the committee? Um, I'll take Mr Alexander first. Thank you. <coughs> You, you comment on the, the Kurdish community here being very sort of active, vocal and visual. How are you going to plan to tap into that and, and what developments do you see coming from that? Yeah, so there's a Kurdish community centre in Edinburgh and uh, the idea would very much be that that would be one of the hubs uh, mm -hmm. through which we would engage with the community involving uh, the folk who organise through the community centre to engage. The community itself is split between the communities of the four different mm -hmm. states, so the, the Turkish Kurdish community, mm -hmm. Syrian Kurdish, etc. Um, and what we're looking to do is engage with each of those communities in turn, as well as bringing them into committee meetings. One of the proposals we had is if we were to meet four times a year, half of uh, each of those meetings would be set aside to look at the particular culture of one of the four regions. We're also exploring the opportunities of perhaps having uh, a display or an exhibition of uh, Kurdish mm -hmm. culture in the parliament. I know the cross-party group on Tibet is going to pursue that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Mr Johnson. Uh, I mean, first of all, I, mean, I, think, I don't think anyone can be uh, under any doubt about the kind of the, 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 the issues and, and, and particular relevance of, of uh, the Kurdish people. Um, I think, uh, as you point out, the, the struggle with, against Daesh and also the, the, the persecution that Kurds have faced from uh, regimes. So I, my point is this, is that, that, that I think it is welcome to discuss the issues surrounding Kurds, but it's obviously going to be potentially a point of controversy with uh, other countries uh, in, in the world. How do you propose to sort of navigate that and deal with those sensitivities, if I can put it in that diplomatic language? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it certainly involves a, a significant amount of diplomacy. I spent uh, two hours with the Turkish Consul General yesterday discussing developments regarding their Kurdish community and the number of Kurdish MPs who found themselves in, in jail in recent weeks. So it is, uh, this is an area where we have to engage very carefully. Um, it has been raised with us that members of the Kurdish community might not attend meetings if, for example, representatives of some of these four governments, uh, their consuls, uh, were present. So we will very much be taking guidance from the Kurdish community. We want to engage with, for example, the Turkish consulate, which uh, I did yesterday through our activities outside of the, uh, this parliament. But we're going to have to be very conscious of that in the way that other cross-party groups, such as the CPG on Russia, is acutely aware of, who may or may not attend from our Russian community if the Russian consulate was in attendance. Mr Harvey. Thanks very much. Uh, there's currently no CPG, as, as far as I'm aware, being planned on asylum and uh, refugee issues. Uh, obviously, there'll be many people from the Kurdish community in Scotland who've come through that route. Uh, others who may not have done, who uh, are right here or, or been here for some time through a different route. I'm just wondering to what extent you anticipate this group engaging with those issues as opposed to engaging with Kurdistan as a, as a country? It's certainly something that we want to look at. Uh, we had a, an informal meeting yesterday to start sketching out ideas for what could make up uh, some of the meetings over the next year. 
and the stories, individual stories of Kurdish refugees who've uh, ended up settling in Scotland is something we want to explore, as well as the wider issue, particularly in relation to the deal that the European Union has made on refugees with mm -hmm. Turkey. That particularly affects Kurdish people because of the relationship that Kurds have with Turkey. Um, it's often portrayed in the media as uh, Turkey being a kind of middle ground for those fleeing conflict in the Middle East. Many Kurds flee conflict in Turkey. So that's certainly a topic that we would like to explore. Thanks. Okay. Any further questions? No. Thank you very much. Um, can I thank you for your attendance this morning? Normally I sort of ask a question about um, crossover with other CPGs, but I see that you've um, addressed that in your submission uh, for the cross-party group. So thank you for that. Um, we will um, now be breaking... Well, um, break to let you leave and we'll consider the CPG application and you'll be informed of our decision in due course. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just suspend for a couple of minutes to allow Mr Greer to leave. So, um, uh, item two is the consideration of the proposed uh, CPG on Kurdistan, and I invite any comments from members this morning. Very happy to support. Happy to support. Happy to support. Happy yeah. to support. Yeah, I'm happy to support and, and uh, declare an interest in that I, my name is mentioned as one of the, the members of the group. Okay, so um, uh, I think that's a unanimous agreement that the recognition of the CPG on Kurdistan is approved by this committee. So thank you very much for that. And we now move into private session. Thank you. <laughs>